Hello everyone. Welcome to another tutorial of linear control systems. Today I'll discuss about the input test signals or test input signals, whatever way you may like it. First of all, let me tell you why do we need these test input signals with respect to a control system. Whenever we design a control system before implementing that particular system practically we need to test that control system for various practical input conditions now when we simulate or this testing part in a lab or in a workshop we need to have the test input signals which are given to a control system and then the output response of the control system to, to that particular specific test input is analyzed and we can deduce from there whether the system is ready to be practically implemented or not. So that is the uh, basic reason why we require these test input signals. So under this topic today I will discuss the basic few test input signals which are used for the testing of the control systems. So the very first test input signal which we use is the step function. Please notice that as we will discuss the various test input signals, please notice the difference in the nature of these input signals. So first of all the step function. Now let me tell you that step function is described or the characteristic property of a step function is defined as the sudden application of input signal. So whenever uh, we need to analyze any control system for the sudden application of certain parameter, we will test it by making use of the step function. So step function is described as the sudden, ap sudden application of input signal which can graphically be shown like this. All these are uh, of course taken with respect to time t and step function is like this, like a step. Let us say the magnitude of this step is given by capital R and I mark this as the point of origin. This is the standard denotion for the input small r as a function of time t and the mathematical representation of the step function is very simple it is r of t is equal to capital r for all the values of time t which are greater than and equal to 0 so that means the value r exists only for the value of time at origin and beyond that and r of t or the input is equal to 0 for all the values of time t which are less than 0. So this is how we define in time domain the mathematical expression for the step input function and as we know that the analysis I have discussed this in my previous tutorials also that all the analysis part is not done in the time domain but in the S domain that is why Laplace transform plays a very vital role in linear control systems. So if I take the Laplace transform of this mathematical equation I can simply say that the Laplace transform because this value is non-existent uh, at t less than 0 so I will consider only the value for t greater than and equal to 0. So the Laplace transform of any constant value r is given by r upon s. So that gives me the Laplace transformed expression for the step function. And in most of the times we make use of unit step function. So unit step function, unit implies 1. So if I say that the value of magnitude r is equal to 1 here then this becomes even more simpler. So Laplace transform of 1 is given by 1 by s. I assume you know this if 
uh, you're not comfortable with the standard Laplace transform pairs, you can refer to the tutorial where I've discussed the standard Laplace transform pairs. So this is one test input signal, the very basic one, step function. Second test input signal is the ramp function. ramp function is graphically denoted like this as the name suggests it is like a ramp so it goes like this this is the input r of t of course with respect to time on the x axis and this is the slope r so if I want to describe this graph with the help of a mathematical equation, I would simply write R of t is equal to t. Let me also tell you that the ramp function or the nature of the ramp function is described as the gradual application of input signal. So in contrast to the step function where the application of input was sudden, in case of the ramp function, it is described as the gradual application of input signal. So this is gradually going up. This was going up in a step virtually in no time, but this takes this much of the time to reach a value. So a ramp function r of t given by t for all the values of t which are greater than and equal to 0 and because it is non-existent before t equal to 0 I will write r of t is 0 for all the values of t which are less than 0. Now to take it to the Laplace domain I can simply take the Laplace transform of t because Laplace transform of a non-existent value makes no sense so Laplace transform of t is given by 1 upon s square which gives me the Laplace transformed value for this particular test input signal known as the ramp function. Ramp function uh, is also known as velocity function and similarly the step function is also known as displacement function. Now I leave it to you to decide the relation between the ramp function and the step function. If I say that step function is also a displacement function and ramp function is also a velocity function, we can very well uh, establish a relationship as we know the relationship between displacement and velocity. Velocity is the first time derivative of displacement. So in the similar manner the first time derivative of step function would of course give me the ramp function. Now coming to the third type of test input signal. The third type of test input signal is the parabolic function. Now a parabolic function is graphically, it looks like this, the input r of t on y axis, of course time t on x axis, it looks like this. As you can compare the two graphs, the RAM function and the parabolic function, you can easily make out that a parabolic function is a more gradual application of the input in comparison to the ramp function. Though both are increasing with respect to time but this is even more gradual, the increase in even more gradual in parabolic function when it is compared to a ramp function and this is also non-existent at 
of b for t equal to 0. So, the mathematical equation would become r of t is r t square by 2. This r is generally taken as unity when we talk about the test input signals. So, here also I have taken r as unity, I will just write it here. Otherwise, the r would be this particular r would also be uh, appearing in this mathematical expression. So, r can have any value. So, for a unit ramp function or a unit parabolic or a unit step function, r takes a value of unity. So, r of t is r t square by 2 for all the values of t which are greater than and equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 for all the values of t which are less than 0. And if r is equal to 1 as I have just said, this r of t will become only t square by 2 and if I want to transform this or take this to the Laplace domain, I will simply take the Laplace transform of t square by 2 which by formula is 1 upon s cube. So, this is the Laplace transform of the parabolic function. Now, can you tell me or can you guess for yourself that what uh, will be the relation between the ramp function and the parabolic function as this is the displacement function, the step function, this is the velocity function. So, this comes out to be the acceleration function. So, if I further take the time derivative, time derivative of ramp function, it will give me the parabolic function. So, the relation between displacement, velocity and acceleration is same as the, the same relation exists between the step function, ramp function and the parabolic function. Now, the fourth type of test input signal and a very important test input signal is the impulse function. So, the impulse function is defined as the input which is suddenly applied number 1 and most importantly it is applied at a shock for a very very short duration of time. So, that is the basic characteristic of an impulse function that it happens in, a, in an impulse in a jerk for a very very short duration of time. So, if I denote this impulse function graphically, it will look something like this. Time t on x axis, r of t on y axis. So, this is it goes to a value and it comes down like this. And this duration of the impulse function is very very short, very very small which I can uh, denote with the help of maybe delta t which denotes a very very small duration of time t and this carries a magnitude or the amplitude of let us say capital R. So and uh, again if the magnitude of impulse function is unity the function is known as the unit impulse function and uh, the unit impulse function is defined as unit impulse function is mathematically equal to the first time derivative that is d by dt of a unit step function. So, if I take uh, Laplace both sides the Laplace of unit impulse function will be equal to the Laplace of time derivative of unit step function. So, this becomes for d by dt I will have 1 s and then the Laplace transform of unit step function just now we have determine the Laplace transform of unit step function which was 1 by s. So, the Laplace transform of impulse function, this impulse function is also denoted by delta t is 1.
or the Laplace transform of unit impulse function is 1. So this is a very very important test input signal this fourth one unit impulse function. Uh, rather all the test input signals plays a very vital role in the analysis of the stability of a control system before we practically uh, implement those control systems. So I hope this quick tutorial on the discussion on various test input signals, their nature, their graphs and mathematical expression was of some help. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video among your friends if you like it. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching the video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.